Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually I will prove Lee's theorem and then we will see some of the consequences of Lee's theorem. Okay. So, in the last lecture we saw Engel's theorem. So, Engel's theorem actually provided a structure uh, result about the nilpotent uh, Lie algebras. So, very similar to that uh, Lee's theorem will actually provide some structural results about uh, soluble Lie algebras. Okay. So, here is the theorem. So, again this is actually easy consequence of uh, invariance lemma. Okay. You start with a uh, linear Lie subalgebra, let us call it G. So, let uh, G being uh, linear Lie subalgebra as before we always assume V is non-zero and finite dimensional vector space over C. Okay. So, then uh, what we want to say, so here is the theorem. So, if G is soluble, okay, so then we can actually get a basis. So, there exists a basis B of V such that, so in which every element of this Lie algebra is represented by an upper triangular matrix. So, in the case of nilpotent Lie algebras, so we got strictly upper triangular matrices, but in the case of soluble Lie algebras, we get uh, strict, we get upper triangular matrices. So there exists a basis B of V, in which every element of G is represented by an upper triangular matrix. So, we already know that uh, any uh, any subalgebra of this uh, algebra, Lie algebra of upper triangular matrices, so that will be soluble. So, indeed uh, Lie's theorem gives us uh, converse of that statement. Okay. So, let us see how one actually proves this. So, this is also again uh, one can actually think as uh, so whatever result that you have learned in uh, linear algebra okay so that is about uh, given one matrix you can have uh, what is called this jordan canonical form which looks like upper triangular matrix okay but now we are actually dealing with uh, uh, family of term, uh, linear transformations but if you look at the Lie algebra structure on that, that is actually soluble Lie algebra structure. So, if we have that soluble Lie algebra structure, then we can assure that there exists a basis such that every element of that uh, soluble Lie algebra is represented by an upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, let us see how to prove this. Again, uh, this theorem will be a consequence of the following proportion. Okay. So, as we actually did it in the nilpotent algebra case, so once we establish this proportion, the theorem will follow immediately from the induction on the dimension of V. So, that part I will leave it as exercise. So, I will only do this uh, proportion. So, you have this G as before sitting inside GL of V where V is a non-zero complex vector space. So, then what we can prove that there exists some vector V which is non-zero vector in capital V such that this uh, V will be eigen vector for okay, simultaneous eigen vector for all x in G. So, what is what does it mean? So, it means so if you if you look at uh, this vector and then the G action on that vector, okay. So, there exists non-zero vector V in capital V such that so you take x times V. Okay. So, this is actually just inside okay, this uh, one dimensional space spanned by V for all 
x in g. So, this is same as saying that, so this is actually a Eigen vector for all x in g. So, it is not hard to see, so what, using this information, okay, so given x in g, so this x v will be some scalar times v, okay, which we can call it lambda x. So, this association x goes to lambda x. So, this will define a map from g to complex numbers. So, this map one can check, okay, I will leave it to you to check is a linear map, okay, that is easy because g is actually a linear space. So, check this lambda is a linear homomorphism. In particularly, lambda is a weight for this g. Okay. So, let us actually see why this is actually true. So, here is the proof. So, as before we will actually establish uh, an ideal inside your Lie algebra g which is of uh, co-dimension 1. So, since g is soluble, so we must have the derivative algebra g g properly contained in g. Okay. So, now you can take a b a space containing g g okay, and of co dimension 1. So, the dimension of a is dimension g minus 1. Okay. So, then it is immediate that a must be ideal inside g and choose y is in cap is not in capital A. So, then this g will be equal to A plus C y. Okay. So, this is all like uh, uh, the argument that we gave before. So, very similar to that we have this. So, now <coughs> so for this like it looks like uh, the dimension of g must be at least 2. So, if dimension of g is 1, then there is nothing to prove. So, it is just a result from the linear algebra. So, you can assume the dimension of g is at least 2. Okay. So, now uh, we, we got this capital A, which is an ideal of co-dimension 1. So, now using the induction, we can we can see that so there exists a non zero weight space or or weight for this uh, capital a such that the corresponding weight space is non zero so since uh, a is being ideal of g a is also soluble so that implies there exists lambda in a star such that this v lambda which is not 0. So, that is those vector in v such that a v is lambda a v for all a in capital A. Okay. So, now if you recall what is invariance lemma, so that simply says that this uh, v lambda is g invariant. Okay. So, this is just using the invariance lemma. So, now we have v lambda is g invariant that means this y will act on v lambda. So, since <coughs> y is a linear transformation acting on v lambda and we are working over complex numbers which is algebraically close. So, that implies we have a uh, eigen vector for this y. Okay. So, there exists some w inside this v lambda such that this y w will be exactly equal to some mu times w okay, for some mu which is eigen value of y complex number. So, now <coughs> it is easy to see that we can extend this lambda to g such that lambda of y to be this mu and using this lambda 
we can see that this w is actually eigen vector for all of them. So, okay, this is uh, lambda of x w for all x and g. Okay. So, that is what we wanted to actually produce. So, that is we succeeded. So, now as before what one can do? We can take that vector okay, C w. So, you call that is subspace u. So, this is actually g invariant subspace. So, then what you can do? You can go modulo that u. So, then naturally <coughs> g will act on this okay, or you can actually look at the image of g inside this g l of v modulo u. Okay, for each x in g will induce x bar which will be a map from v modulo u to v modulo u. So, now look at this x bar where x is coming from g. So, this will be a sub algebra of this g l of v modulo u. So, now this dimension is actually strictly less than the dimension of v. So, by induction what you can say that uh, there is a basis of this v modulo u with respect to that basis all the elements of this g dash represented as upper triangular matrix. So, since g dash is actually soluble as being quotient of this g, okay, I will leave it to you to check g dash is indeed soluble okay, that is not hard to actually check. So, once you check that this correspondence x goes to x bar is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that would imply that g dash is soluble. So, now by using induction you get a basis of v mod u with respect to that basis each element of g dash represented upper triangular matrix. Now, you, you take that basis of v mod u and then add this element uh, w with that. So, then you get a basis of capital V. So, then it is not hard to prove with respect to that basis uh, each element of x will be represented as upper triangular matrix. So, I will leave you to check all those things. Okay check that okay, here there exists a basis B of V mod U such that x bar B is upper triangular matrix. So, now you can take B union B union that W. So, that will be a basis of V and if you call this is B dash then X B dash is upper triangular for all X in G. So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, that proves that uh, uh, proves the least theorem. Okay, so, G is soluble if and only if okay, you assume that G is coming from G L of E then there exists a basis such that this is happening. Actually like one can say that uh, <coughs> this is uh, true even for any arbitrary algebra as before because if you start with an arbitrary algebra then G modulo the center G. So, you can say that that is embedded inside G L of G. So, if G is soluble then this G modulo center G will be soluble. So, there will be a basis uh, in which all elements of this add G will be represented as upper triangular matrix. So, in particularly you can see that all the images of G also will be represented as upper triangular matrices. Okay. So, actually uh, the generalization of Lie's theorem is not true over uh, general fields. Okay. So, because uh, the invariance lemma is used uh, very crucially. So, if you recall the proof of the invariance lemma, so we actually had some situation like this. So, the trace of x y times m being 0 uh, implied that. So, this m being the dimension, okay, some dimension of some subspace. 
So, then from this we concluded that the trace of bracket x y is 0. Okay. So, if you work with the characteristic p field then this conclusion is not true anymore. Okay. So, that is why uh, this Lee's theorem is not in, in general true. So, what I mean by Lee's theorem that uh, there exists a basis <coughs> in which each element of your Lie algebra is uh, represented as upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, for example, what you can do you can take p to be a prime number and then you can work with uh, for example, f p or any field f with which has characteristic p. Okay. So, then look at this particular <coughs> two dimensional subalgebra of G L P F. Okay. <coughs> Take this G which is span of x y inside G L of f p 2. Okay. So, I guess I used the other way notation. So, this is uh, G L 2 f p 2 by 2 matrices where entries are coming from f p. So, I will tell you explicitly what is this x and y. So, you take x to be this particular matrix where diagonal entries are 0 and this. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> southeast corner is 1 okay. and the first half diagonal of diagonal entries are 1 and all other entries are 0. Okay. So, this is your x and what is y? So, y you take it to be the diagonal matrix where diagonal, diagonal entries are 0, 1, 2 etcetera p minus 1 all other entries are 0 and it is not hard to check I will leave it as exercise. So, it is not hard to check that the bracket x y is actually indeed x. In particularly G is a two dimensional subalgebra of this uh, G L 2 F p. So, now uh, if you think about it, it is actually soluble. Okay. So, this is soluble Lie algebra. So, that is easy to see because the derivative algebra is one dimensional. If you take G of bracket 2 that will be 0. Okay. But it is easy to show that uh, x and y they will never have some common eigenvectors. Okay. So, it is uh, easy to prove that x and y have no common vector, common eigenvector. Because Lee's theorem says actually over complex numbers any soluble Lie algebra will have common eigenvector. Okay. But here we have established two dimensional example over f p that does not have any common. So, again <coughs> I urge you to check these facts. So, these are all not uh, very difficult facts to prove. Okay. So, in particularly so, the conclusion of Lee's theorem fails over characteristic p fields. Okay. So, so it is a very interesting example that is why I just wanted to state it here. Okay. Now, what we will do actually using Lee's theorem we will actually give one more characterization of uh, uh, this uh, nilpotent Lie algebras. Okay. So, you can easily see that uh, so any uh, from Engels theorem. Uh, any nilpotent Lie algebra uh, like if it is okay, let us say linear Lie algebra. Okay. So, that can be embedded inside strictly upper triangular matrices. Okay. So, now uh, that means okay, if you think about uh, using the Lie's theorem, if you start with uh, soluble linear Lie algebra, so then there is a basis such, such that all uh, all elements of this Lie algebra can be represented as upper triangular matrices. But if you take derived algebra of upper triangular matrix that will be strictly upper triangular matrix. So, that indeed proves if you take G 
which is uh, soluble linearly algebra. So, then the derived algebra must be nil potent. Okay. So, this is something very very uh, interesting consequence of Engels theorem. So, this is actually somewhat characterize all soluble Lie algebras. Okay. So, here is the theorem it is actually easy consequence of uh, uh, Lee's theorem. So, if you take G, so this is soluble if and only if the derived algebra is nil potent. Okay. So, if G is soluble, so then we can easily see that uh, okay, at least for linear Lie algebra it is very clear. Okay. Maybe I will leave it to you to think about what happens for the arbitrary Lie algebra, but for linear Lie algebra what happens if G is soluble there exists a basis such that G can be realized as inside some T and C. So, that will imply that the bracket G G is inside inside the strictly upper triangular matrices. So, that implies that this G G is nil potent. Suppose the derived algebra is nil potent, then what happens? Obviously, the derived algebra is soluble, okay, nil potent implies soluble. But if you take the quotient G modulo the derived algebra, so since it is abelian, so, so that will imply that G must be soluble because the derived algebra is soluble, the quotient is soluble, so G must be soluble. So, this way is obvious. Okay. So, only the other way uses least theorem. So, like I said, you think about uh, lean, uh, general arbitrary. Uh, Lie algebra whether this satisfies the same characterization. Okay, I will stop here uh, with this characterization. So, in the next class I will actually continue with the representation theory. Okay, thank you very much.